we've had fog for the past three days and today has been a little bit of fog but it's been raining off and on since about 6.30, 7 o'clock this morning. Um, I'm getting 12.5 on the voltmeter. Totally great skies. Um, I had to buy a new battery though. The last time I went four days without any sun when I charged it down at the travel trailer, um, the battery would not take a new charge. So I went and had to buy a new battery and I bought a marine battery. Anyway, um, had to go to two medical appointments so far this week. I have another one this afternoon. Both of them were two-hour drives, so it's four-hour drives in one day, back-to-back. -back. That really sucked. Next week is going to be very similar. I have three appointments next week, all driving minimum of two hours one way, um, three different locations. So that's really going to suck. Um, this is supposed to be the last good week, although today's kind of crappy. Yesterday was wonderful. Tomorrow's supposed to be wonderful. And then Friday is supposed to be rainy again. Anyway, so I've been seriously thinking about working that root cellar over there, but I know that I can't do it by myself, so I would really love somebody to come and help me work on that. Let's see what else can I say? My foot really hurts today. I had some, I go see the podiatrist and um, he's having me do some, cut my foot every day to try and get my body to naturally heal. And um, I guess I cut myself really deep last night because my foot really hurts today. Um, I don't know, it's really, really eerily quiet in the woods today. I'm talking about eerily quiet. No birds, the chipmunks. Oh, there's a bird. I don't even hear the chipmunks. I haven't seen a squirrel. I'm wondering what that is. If you can see it, I don't know if you can see it or not. Um, I thought it was an army tent, but it turns out to be an army hammock. So I'm trying to figure out how it sets up. But uh, health-wise, I'm doing really good. Um, doing all the medical appointments for a transplant, getting ready for that. Um, it's still a long ways off, but they have to do all these approval medical appointments. Um, and I'm also working on my compensation and pension medical appointments, which are totally different things as well, because I'm going from one set of disability to 100% disability because of my kidney disease. Um, I, I'm not even sure if that will revert back to what I am at now once I get a kidney or not, or whether it just stays at 100%. Um, I may not even get 100% because of the upcoming kidney transplant, but in any case, um, oh, my brother said uh, he might come up and spend a week with me here at the cabin. So I uh, kind of really hope he does, and that would be really cool to spend some time with him. Um, Oh, and I was hiking the other day, and I tripped and fell in an area that was, it was not a path. I was off walking in the woods, and so I got this big gash across my leg right here, and it really hurts. The doctor was kind of curious about it. He wanted to know if I had an operation. That's how big, that's how big the gash is, and I got patches on it. Yeah, it's just so eerily quiet. Really strange. And of course, the, um, the loggers haven't been here for this is week two. Um, their big machine broke down and their little hauling machine broke down. So they have both of those in the shop. And, um, yeah, I was supposed to go down to Washington, D.C. for a couple photo shoots and for an art exhibit. But my compensation and pension medical appointments came up. And I was keeping that week free because I rescheduled I don't know how many appointments this month. So I could have that week free in compensation and pension. You can't change those appointments unless there's a death in the family or you're in the hospital. And they scheduled three appointments during that week. So 
I was pissed off like you would not believe. Um, but that's life, and that's, uh, I mean, I have to go through those appointments. So I had to cancel my photo shoots, and I can't go to the art exhibit. So that really sucks, big time. I feel like I'm um, foregoing my photography c career being out here because I'm spending all my time doing this and not traveling. But um, I'm really enjoying this, and this is probably a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for me, whereas I had the rest of my life, however long that may be, to do photography. So I'm okay with it. And there's that clicking bird just started up too. Uh, no one's uh, been able to tell me what that is yet. And I desperately need wood because I don't have enough wood to last me the month of November. But I've got a field down behind the burnt out house where the travel trailer is. Uh, a bunch of trees were cut down and some of the wood's already been sold. So all I have to do is collect it, put it in my truck and bring it up here um, and then chop it. Um, but behind this cabin is an old barn foundation um, up that way where the, the road is where the um, logging road is, and over here where um, the old trail was, that is just jammed packed full of felled trees that are 10 inches or less, and that's what I'm allowed to take for firewood. Um, so I just need a chainsaw and an axe and get my butt in gear and start working on it. So this is where the root cellar used to be, and as you can see, there's a fallen tree there, you know, with a uh, the branch going up that way. Over here, let's see, change hands. There's a dead tree right here, and there's a. Let's see if I can get my finger in there again. There's another tree that's fallen down a couple of years ago, but um, the foundation is basically all still there. Um, this side of the foundation, which is just on this side of the tree, was actually pushed in by the loggers. So that, ha um, you basically they would have to pull out the trees, chop them up, or pull out the trees in period. Um, and then a lot of the rocks have fallen down inside. Pull all the rocks out, rebuild the, the walls, and then put a uh, roof on it. Um, I, there'd be very little digging, probably an hour's worth of digging to get the floor solid and flat. And uh, the stairs used to be over here, but the way the loggers came through, there's no way you could put stairs again in this. But over there would probably would be the, the place to put the stairs. So if you are uh, looking in comparison to where the cabin is, there's the cabin. I mean, so that's the, uh, the west side of the cabin. And um, let's see. Get my finger in there again. That's the solar panels. You know, over here is my truck. That's where I sit. You know, this is the south. Um, yeah, the south side, and the west side of the cabin. So, if anybody has any any knowledge or expertise on root cellar building, the old-fashioned way, rather than the cement block way, which is how all the books tell me tell you to do it now, um, not dry stacking then uh, I would appreciate any comments. And of course, if you want to come out here and help me build this, I am more than happy to gladly accept help in that, ma in that matter. Tomorrow is the start of hunting season for um, at least the kind of hunting that I'm going to be doing squirrel and grouse and small game and stuff. So I started off this morning um, right after breakfast went out target practicing with an over under and it's called that but I can open it and use the correct hand I suppose because you can do a shotgun here shotgun shell here and a 22 right there. People tell me this all the time. I am right eyed. Technically, I'm right handed, but I'm actually ambidextrous. 
Um, I write with my right hand. I eat with my right hand. But I pretty much do almost everything else with my left hand. Um, when I was in the Army, I shot expert with the M16 with my left hand, left eye. And when I shot with my right hand, right eye, I was the next level down, whatever, sharpshooter or whatever that was called. And um, people tell me that because I'm a right eyed and supposedly right handed person, that I should not shoot left eyed or left handed at all. But, and I was telling that to, to Kevin, the guy who uh, owns this property, when we were practicing with this. And I was shooting just slightly below the target, the center. So I was either like right on the line or right below it. And he was like, we could do a pretty good you know, grouping, and which I've always been pretty good at doing groupings. Um, so I said, well, let me just prove to you that I shoot better with my left hand. And he laughed and he said, okay. And I did it and my very first shot was dead center. My son, he said, okay, let's see you do it again. Second shot, I was not dead center, but I was still in the, in the center. Um, it was like slightly to the left of it. And then a third time, slightly below it, but still dead center. So all three were a good, very good grouping right in the exact center. And he said, I can't believe that you shoot better with left-handed. So we tried, uh, um, you know, we went back 25 feet or something like that and tried it again and then the same thing happened. I was better with my left hand than my right hand. Um, but in any case, so I can shoot either hand either eye, either hand, and um, yeah, and, and I had a discussion yesterday with a, with a uh, guy at the gun store, I was looking at a, a Savage 380 or 308, um, and I really like that for you know, deer and bear, but um, I'm not there yet, and, I, and Kevin has a Savage 308, so um, I'm going to be using his until I decide to buy my own. Anyway, so this is great. I love working with this, and it was right height, um, no kick with the 22, a little bit of a kick with the with the shotgun shell, and um, I don't know. I like it. So I posted a picture that you know I had this hanging in the back of my truck. Then we uh, went and had some lunch. We went and moved some, uh, uh, tomorrow's supposed to be our first frost, so I was helping Kevin move in some plants from outside. Big, huge, heavy bots. Um, and then we would dug up some beets and some kohlrabi and um, some other stuff from the garden. Doesn't really matter what. And I gathered some apples off of one of the tree, two of the trees. And, the sheep. That was fun. Played with the hay bale. We had to move the hay bale and so I had hay all over me. I always kept, kept itching for the couple, couple hours. Um, then I went and collected wood. Um, the next house up is not owned by Kevin. It is owned by a guy named Doc. And uh, he has three tiny little dogs and uh, not tiny but three little dogs and one big dog. And uh, he's a little 14 year old dog that's it's black and white. It's real cute. He was out wandering this morning, and he was still out when I came by the second time. So I stopped, and I like petting him. So I was petting him, and one of the other dogs came out, and so I was petting him. And then the third dog came out, and I was petting him. Um, the fourth dog is tied up in the backyard, so I don't, I don't get to pet him anymore. But anyway, as I was petting all three dogs, Doc came out, and so we talked for at least a half an hour, if not longer. Um, and came back here. It's 50 degrees, so I started a fire um, and made some hot cocoa, dark chocolate hot cocoa. So I'm looking forward to that. It's cooling off right now. But anyway, uh, I'm kind of real excited about hunting season starting tomorrow. I've got my orange gear over there, orange vest and orange seat to sit on, my orange hat, orange gloves. But yeah, I like this really, this over under. Uh, I like this a lot. And, um, I didn't think I would, but I do, I do like it. So, the 308 and the Silver Under are going to be my hunting weapons.
and it's just so eerily quiet out here. I know I've said that many times, but it really is. 